What problems does this present to you, and what can you do uh, to counteract them? Well, it's a fact that uh, MiG-23s or floggers, that's a NATO code name, have arrived in Syria. These aircraft, uh, if you take a look at Jane's, all the world's aircraft, are swing wing aircraft. And as far as I know, they are the latest uh, operational hardware the Russians have put into service. And as far as I know, they even uh, made the first here by handing over these aircraft to another country before they did hand, it, uh, hand them over to their satellites in Europe. Although they are deployed in Europe, they are flown by Soviets. This aircraft has uh, probably much better maneuverability. And it is my guess for the time being that they have a better at the ground capability than their former aircraft. Well, as you well know, the F-14 and the F-15 are in production now. The F-14 in higher numbers, and the F-15 has only just started. I would say that uh, technically, if the United States wanted to sell us aircraft now and give them out of stock, they could be here tomorrow. But I guess uh, that it uh, will take uh, some quite months, a few months, to acquire them in normal procedures. To date, we don't have, I don't have positive information that the Egyptians have already received floggers. I know for a fact that the Syrians have. Well, I, as I said before, I wouldn't go and state that we have begun to be inferior just because the flogger has arrived. It is a better performing aircraft. We still think the gap of aircraft plus pilot is sufficient to counter this threat, but we want more. Sir, have you uh, surmounted the problems posed by the Soviet-made ground-to-air missiles of the latest types uh, in the field? Perhaps you could give us a, a, some background, at least me, uh, a little more background on the problems that you encountered during the war uh, that evidently you were not able to uh, overcome at that time with regards to those missiles. Well, like a good Jew, I'll answer you with a question. Do you think the uh, tank has overcome the anti-tank gun? No, but it can live with it. All right. So the second uh, part of your question implied that we, uh, how did you phrase it? We did not. In the war? Yes. Apparently, you had problems in coping with those missiles on the ground in operational situations, mm -hmm. as far as my limited knowledge is. Well, I don't know of any war that is, has no problems. But I will say this. The appearance of uh, ground-to-air missiles in large numbers in a dense environment has changed mainly, and that was evident in this war, in the beginning of it at least, has changed the capability of the pilot to loiter in the area and acquire his own eyeball intelligence of what's on the ground. His time to loiter has been diminished quite sharply unless he was willing to take a loss that is a little higher and the stress is a little higher than otherwise. Now I think uh, I will not break any security rules if I told you that uh, at any given time, 
when the exact knowledge of what's to be destroyed on the ground was known in enough time before the strike was scheduled and it was capable of being planned, no amount of ground to air missiles or any type of that opposition has ever deterred an aircraft from reaching its target, neither in the front nor in the back areas. You mean the Chaparral missile? Well, I, uh, I don't think I'll reveal any secret in saying that one of the advantages of using passive systems like the Chaparral, although they are short range, is that the capability of the enemy to locate and destroy them is uh, difficult because it's a completely passive system. It doesn't give out any emissions whatsoever. And in that respect, it's much harder to counter than a transmitting electronic, electronically guided missile system. Uh, there are countermeasures against uh, IR-seeking missiles. We have developed some, but then that will bring down the total capability of the system to some extent, but still, it will make the enemy decide to equip all its aircraft with these countermeasures. And this, as you know, is not chicken feed. Oh. Uh, Bruno Hawthorne, uh, General, has, is there any significance to the lowering of certain standards for Air Force uh, <coughs> personnel, flight personnel? Air aircraft now monitoring the Syrian disengagement and question do they cross Israeli airspace and what problems does that pose to the Israeli Air Force? I have to be reluctant on this point. These are things that have been settled in the bilateral and trilateral agreements between Americans, Syrians, Egyptians, and the Israelis. And I would much rather if you didn't ask me that question. Hold on to your plane. Or to put it the other way around, do you think that the type of missiles that the uh, Palestinian organizations have been talking about could pose a serious deterrent to future retaliatory raids on the uh, camps in which these headquarters are located. I resent your definition of retaliatory raids. I think they were not that at all. They were preventive raids. They were designed to disrupt their capability to murder and rape and whatever they do. In no way were they retaliatory. As to your real question, of course, if they set up an air defense system, we'll have to tackle it. If we have to tackle it, and they place these systems in areas where people we do not want to hurt abound, they will be hurt too. It will be a decision of cost effectiveness for us to decide if we want to take the losses that such an air defense system will acquire of us and the results we want. I uh, would not advise anybody to make a bet that if such a system springs up in Lebanon, our calculations will show that it's uh, better not to touch it. I would not advise anybody to bet on it. But would they have to have a really massive or very They will have to have, weapon. to create a major problem, they will have to have the same density that the Egyptians and the Syrians have had first day of the war along that stretch of land in the Golan Heights and the canal. And even that, when you're not pressed for time, is not a problem that cannot be overcome. Whether any of them may have the training to do so in the future? 
area, there are not double standard, but multiple standards known and accepted in the world. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies. Thank you.